Hello and welcome to Promise Gaming and more Plague Inc. Evolved. I'm a little sick today. Got a little, uh, something going on in the back of my throat. I know exactly what it is, but it's, it's not pleasant. And of course, uh, you know, if you're sick, then what better thing to do than to play Plague Inc., right? Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's infect the world and drown out my sorrows by making everyone else die of a disease. So let's go to single player and those custom scenarios because I've been having a lot of fun with those lately. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and play the Clockwork Virus, because that was recommended to me, and I did a little looking up-see. Clockwork Virus here is a strange, unclassable virus, the likes of which mankind has never seen before. Infect humanity and kill them through a series of horrific flesh-to-metal transformations, based off of the SCP Foundation wiki. Specifically, I believe it is SCP-217, which is a virus that change, uh, rearranges organic matter into a form of organic metal. So, pretty awesome idea, I think, for a virus type, but uh, let's go ahead and give this a shot. Of course, as usual, I've never done this before. I have no idea what I'm looking into, and I think we'll stick with our usual lineup, and we'll play on normal. My god, my voice is just completely messing me up. Oh yeah, it is SCP-217. What do you know? Hmm. Try and drink a little tea. Ooh, that did not help much. Woozies! All right. Tick-tock, the Doomsday Clock has begun its countdown, infect humanity, and convert their flesh and blood into a jumble of metal machinery with disastrous consequences. Fun. Pick a starting country. What's a country you don't usually start off in? Um... Canada. Bam. We're gonna start in Canada. Why Canada? I don't know. Because no one ever does it. Who starts in Canada? That Canadian healthcare system, man, I'm telling you what. Alright, so let's take a look at our special transmission options. We have... Ooh, Zoonotic Shift. The virus becomes capable of identifying and manipulating non-humic genetic material. Opens up options to infect animals and insects. Increases infectivity. Well, that's obviously going to be important pretty early on. Of course, we still will want to have things like water and air, I imagine. There's blood, there's fomites. This probably will lead to birds, rats, insects, and bats. If it's anything like the, uh, ooh, gosh, what was it? Was it the necrovirus that hit Zoonotic Shift? I think so. As far as symptoms, we have ocular itching. The virus enters the human body from the eyes. Gradual conversion of cells into metal lead. Oh, sorry, into metal lead. <laughs> to frequent itching in eyes. Increases infectivity and severity. Which does translate into additional DNA points for us. So severity, this isn't mega brutal. Maybe a little severity early on isn't going to hurt too much. Also a rash... Okay. And pharyngitis. Well, obviously, we're going to want ocular itching pretty early on. We do have rampant growth as a special ability. As the virus converts human tissue into metal, it takes a portion of the ingested flesh to replicate itself. Ooh, the virus grows exponentially, increasing mutation. Potentially useful. Of course, we already have symptostasis, so my symptoms are pretty cheap. I'm not sure how many things I want to mutate like that, but we'll see. All right, well, let's save up some points, I think for water one. We'll start off with some of our basic infectivity options. Mass panic over 3D robotic juicer. Little did you know, that was little Sally Sally May, and she turned into a robotic juicer because she was the first victim of the clockwork virus. There. Now don't you feel guilty about thinking it was about it was a juicer. It was a human being, human child, you didn't even know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm a little bit woozy right now. Gosh, it's like, there's something, like, one of my lymph nodes, right at the base of the tongue area, is, like, really swollen, which makes it so hard to talk, because anytime you use your tongue, of course it's moving! Let's grab air one as well, just for good measure. Uh, anyway, yeah, just talking is extremely painful. Um, I'm holding it together the best I can, but if I sound like I'm breaking up a little bit, that's why. And occasionally, I have to take some sips of tea, like now, so you'll have to pardon me. Hmm. Huh. Doesn't always help, but sometimes it does, so we'll stick with it. Don't worry, though. I am not converting into metal, at least as far as I'm aware. I am not converting into metal. Let's go ahead and grab um, ocular itching. I want to see what this else this leads into. Subconjunctival bleed. An ocular infection worsens. Larger quantities of metal pieces in the eyes damage membranes and blood vessels, causing bleeding. Ooh, bleeding from the eyes. Much more severe. I'm going to do it. 
because at this point, you know, we're, again, we're only playing on normal difficulty. I feel like I can get away with a little early game severity, and the early game severity can actually translate into more DNA points from red and orange bubbles, which, of course, means maybe, just maybe, we can shoot for a better score, ultimately. This, of course, leads to headache. Uh, okay, reduces research rate, that's useful. Cranial elephantitis. The virus converts the skull into solid metal, greatly increasing its weight. The infected cannot support this weight, causing their necks to snap. Lethal. Really? You think so? Okay. Well, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, some con conjunctival hemorrhage, shards of junk metal in the eyes, tear and rupture membranes and blood vessels, leading to serious internal bleeding. Lethal. Increases severity in infectivity. Let's grab drug resistance level 1. Oh, this leads to something different. So there's drug resistance level 2, and then situational shutdown? Virus shuts itself down in lab conditions, making it harder for scientists to study its behavior. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. Very clever, SCP-217. You glorious bastard, you. Mm. Alright. Mm. <sighs> Man. Well, we've managed to infect like 100 people in Canada. You know, it's interesting to play this game once in a while, starting on different countries and kind of watching to see which countries have, like, different airplane and boat patterns that maybe you hadn't even thought about. That's how you learn, man. Canada is considered to be not rural or urban. It's just wealthy and cold. That sounds about right. I guess it would depend a lot on where you are in Canada as to whether or not it's rural or urban. Toronto, pretty urban. Alberta, pretty rural. Yeah, you know, it's just, you know, just kind of what it is. Got 13 points, what can we do with it? Because so far this feels like it's going kind of slow. Um, it's not a lot of infectivity, honestly. Water 2 would serve us so much better and give us more options to start going to places like Greenland and such. And maybe we just save up a few points. It's probably fine. Yeah, why not? It's, it's totally fine. Shut up. No problem. Seriously, though. I mean, I'm going to lose points just from the sheer amount of time it's going to take to get started. Maybe starting in Canada was a bad idea, but whatever. You know, we got to have fun. That's the whole point of these custom scenarios. It's not about going for the perfect, you know, the perfect method. It's about plopping myself into unfamiliar situations in a sink or swim environment and have fun. I call that good. I think that's worthwhile. Oh, good. UK, United States, Canada, good. A lot of the Commonwealth territories are properly infected, and now we have Central America. Alright, where else can we go from there? Mm, let's see, the UK, I think will go to... I don't really know, actually. Well, apparently Russia. The UK goes to Russia. Good to know. We have a tiny little boat flying all the way down here. I'm hoping it's going to... it's going to Japan, apparently. That was a very long roundabout route, and a plane got there before the boat did. Very anticlimactic. Any other symptoms we want to pick up right now? Probably. Uh, let's go for a headache. Why not? A little extra severity and infectivity. Sure, they'll detect us, but I'm getting extra points from these bubbles. And there's still a lot of the world left to infect, so... You know, let's take advantage of that a little sooner rather than later. Good, there's Australia, there's Saudi Arabia. I do love getting me some Saudi Arabia. Let's take a look at some abilities here. Let's get some heat resistance level 1, because I imagine we're going to need it. Then again, I don't know. Maybe my virus doesn't start off uh, very resistant to the cold. Alright, so they found SCP-217. This uh, means they probably are supposed to be trying to contain it now, but... How do you contain a virus like this? How does that work? I'm sure I could look it up on the SCP Foundation wiki. Cognitive scrambling, shards of converted metal in the brain, damage membranes and blood vessels resulting in frequent spasms, increases severity and reduces cure rate. Not infectivity, just severity. But reduces the cure, which is nice. Rash is pretty good, let's pick it up. That leads to muscle cramps, gradual conversion of human muscle groups to intricate clockwork. Equivalents result in severe muscle cramps. Lots of things to reduce research speed, I'm noticing, in this particular disease type. Lumps. Quantity of metal displaces human flesh, causing swollen lumps to appear. Pharyngitis. Let's just pick it up and see what this leads to. Oh! Uh, masticatory tension. As muscle groups in the jaws are converted into intricate clockwork, infected find it's increasingly harder to move their mouths. 
increase the severity. You know, the guy keeps saying intricate clockwork a lot. Like, that's, that's like a, that's a recurring theme I'm noticing here. Coughing increases infectivity and severity. Uh, sure, it's only four points, why not? That leads to dizziness. Infection uh, spreads from the respiratory tract to coronary arter arteries. Gosh, can't talk. Conversion of arterial cells to metal impedes blood flow in the body, causing dizziness. Again, lots of severity. What an unusual disease. Let's grab the zodiac shift, because I want to see. Oh, it's not, um, it's not bats. It's wildlife. Virus implants microchips in host brain to increase aggression. Increases infectivity, especially in rural regions. We'll probably want to get insects level one, honestly. Mm, excuse me. Because we started off in a pretty cold place. We could get more heat resistance, but getting some um, insects could be kind of nice for us to spread throughout places like, you know, Africa. Oh, cool. They actually did change the description for even the uh, common infectivity type. So, for example, insect level two, virus transforms insect stingers, claws, mandibles into metal, allowing them to pierce through protective clothing. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, we have people working on a cure progress already, and not a lot is happening. There's some lumps. I guess we gotta take our lumps. Canada shuts down their seaports, do they? No, too little, too late, buddy. Let's go ahead and grab Air 2. And that leads to Extreme Bioaerosol, with a different icon for some reason. Viruses micro appendages? Really? That's interesting. I haven't been reading those. Whoa, hello. Let's see if we can grab some more severity real quick. What if we get that severe? Cognitive scrambling, reduce cure research rate, sure, we'll do it. And then pop, 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 pop. I was hoping to get a little extra DNA out of those, but it didn't seem to happen. Doop a doop doop doop. Okay. What's this? Dermal calcification. The virus completely converts human skin into metal with flexible meshes at joint areas to allow movement. Unwieldy weight reduces mobility and cure research rate. There's a lot of ways to reduce the cure research. Some lethal seizures. Praxia, bruised brain tissue impedes motor control. Can be lethal. Mm. Pulmonary fibrosis. Uh. Let's go for um, insects level two. Because I'm going to need to spread through these hot regions a lot faster. And insects are... Whoa, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Insects should be able to do that pretty easily for us. Uh, let's take a look at some abilities because we haven't done much. Let's grab some uh, drug resistance. Do I want rampant growth? I feel like that's kind of a waste. I don't really feel like I use mutation in this game that often. Hmm. Let's go for heat resistance level 2. Because I know those are things that I'm going to want slash need. And they've started finally working on that cure. Let's go ahead and pick up situational shutdown. So that it's very difficult to study the clockwork virus. And then situational self-destruct. Forcing scientists to study it in live subjects, adding complication, greatly reduces future research speed. Sure, we'll pick it up. There. Now all we need are those nice little blue bubbles, which will, uh, of course, give me DNA because of my standard setup. What else do we want? Fomites is good in wealthy, and wealthy is particularly difficult to spread in now because of that special event. So sure, fomites level one should help us overcome a lot of that. Uh, we already have drug resistance maxed out, so we're good there. Um, I think we start going for things like what? Lethal, 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 not lethal. Muscle cramps? Will increase severity. That leads to bone dysplasia. The virus converts all of the bones in the human body into solid metal, greatly increasing body weight. Infected are forced to the ground and starved to death. My god. This is horrifying. Um... Dermal calcification. How does this increase infectivity? That doesn't make sense to me. Hmm. Let's grab birds one. Because I'm noticing that we're getting a lot of symptoms that, that either decrease research speed or increase severity, but not a lot of things that increase your infectivity. Uh, Mexico is leading the global cure effort. Well, there's those blue bubbles I was talking about. We should start getting some lethality, I think, and start killing people off. What would work well? I kind of like the idea of cranial elephantitis. Yeah, we're just going to make people snap their necks. No big deal. It's fine. Totally fine. Uh, pulmonary fibrosis is also infective and a little lethal, so that's fine. Just make sure we don't go a little bit uh, too cray-cray. How's Greenland looking? It's going up, but slowly. 
A lot of people are looking to cure said clockwork virus. We are not fully infected in China, Argentina. Is that Argentina? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I was right. Uh, okay, let's just yeah, let's just find ways to reduce cure speed. Dermal calcification sounds good. Um. Um. The praxia sounds good. Or praxia, whatever it is, that leads to paralysis. Lethal increases severity. Usually, paralysis leads to a decrease in cure speed. So I'm not really sure. Germany begins to break down. We are killing quite a few people now. Well, a bit. Let's see. Bone dysplasia. Hmm. Asphyxiation. Complete transformation of the lungs. Whew. Hmm. I don't know. What do we want? What's good in this case? Subsequent conjunctival hemorrhage sounds okay, and blindness greatly reduces cure speed. There we go. That should buy us a bit of time. At least I hope it does. You know, again, I've never done this before. They managed to manipulate my genes, and there are no healthy people left in the world. Okay, fine. As much lethality as possible. Paralysis is pretty good on that front. Asphyxiation is especially good. Sure, let's convert their lungs into metal. So they can't breathe. Because, uh, if I recall correctly, metal, not very good at, uh, absorbing and distributing oxygen. That creepy little girl, I swear. She'll never go away. Seizures! That leads to brain death. Large jagged shards of metal in the brain cause catastrophic damage. Oh my god. Killing the infected instantly! Highly lethal, you think? Coma, sure, we'll go for brain death. Giant shards of shrapnel developing in their brain. This doesn't sound horrifying at all. The entire world is infected. I got so many points. Fine. Coma's good. Subversion. Completely convert... Completely conversion of the human brain? You mean complete conversion? I'm sure that's what you meant. Into an intricate clockwork computer turns infected humans into shambling drones that seek to spread the virus. That's pretty cool. A little late in the tree to be very useful because we've already infected everybody, but still... Kind of cool. Dizziness leads to palpitations, impeding its ability to pump blood, sure. I'm just kind of seeing what all the other options are here. Circulatory breakdown, complete conversion of the heart into a ball of intricate clockwork, again with the intricate clockwork. Mechanisms leads to a total failure of the circulatory system. If we picked up to masticatory tension, we would get gastric ulceration. Ooh, disrupting the protective mucus layer. That's horrifying. Your body has to create a new layer of music every, uh, mucus in your stomach. Like, what is it, every few minutes? Otherwise, it'll dissolve itself. It's horrifying. We'll pick it up. Diarrhea. Seems a little normal. Well, no, now that I think about it, that's actually horrifying. Conversion of flesh to metal in the intestines greatly reduces digestive efficiency, resulting in excretion of half-digested food. You know, believe it or not, not having good digested food in your intestines can cause serious damage. Worse of all, if there's, let's say, jagged pieces of metal going through your intestines, you're doomed. We'll pick it up for fun. And that leads to starvation. The gastrointestinal tract is completely converted into complex clockwork machinery, rendering the infected unable to digest their food highly lethal. Okay, we'll do all of those. Complete subversion. All of Earth's human population has been transformed into mindless clockwork drones, shambling aimlessly around. They search for non-existent prey to spread their flesh-warping infection too. Is that the end? Oh, that's all I had to do! Oh! I didn't have to kill everybody, I just had to turn them into clockwork drones! Oh! I didn't know that! Well, of course we only got one star. First off, starting in Canada was probably a bad idea. Two, you know, I didn't realize this was like, you know, the Necroa virus as far as turning all everyone into zombies, or the Nurax worm as far as just getting it spread to everybody. Although, I guess now that I think about it, that makes sense. Probably should have thought about it. But had I known, sure, I would have just gone straight down that tree and done nothing else. We would have won this game a long time ago. Eh, you live and you learn. It's fine. Gosh, it did take a long time for us to spread, didn't it? It took us hundreds of days to spread. Either that or this thing. I, I am very much convinced that the playback is not done very much in real time. Like, there's, there's certain... Out of sync portions, I'm convinced. But, you know, either way, we did spread pretty quickly in the end, and then we killed very quickly in the end. 781 days, 1 out of 3 stars. Meh. You know, that was okay. I won't say that that was the most enjoyable 
that I've done. But yeah, it was enjoyable, I guess. I mean, it wasn't great, but it was pretty good. I'd recommend it. Sure, try it out. Absolutely try it out. Now we have to think about other ones that we might want to do at some point. Ooh, boy. Rise of the Xenomorphs, A Demon Awakens. Ooh. Look up Plague, Inc. A Demon Awakens on YouTube to get the accompanying music. What? That's crazy. Nurex Worm Aftermath. The Anti-Plague. That's pretty cool. And hey, let me know what you guys think. Tell me what you guys like to see me do next. If you have some particular custom scenarios you've done that you really enjoy, let me know. If you guys tried the Clockwork Virus for yourself and you got a really good score, what strategy do you use? I'd be really interested to know. And in the meantime, thank you guys for watching because that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. My name has been Provis, and I will see you guys next time.